Hey everybody, Jen Hatmaker here. Welcome to the For the Love podcast. I'm so glad you hit play. You guys, right now we are in a series called For the Love of Food. I probably do not need to explain to you why I wanted to do a series like this. I love food so much. I love how it brings us together. I love how it gives us a place to be creative. I love that we get to eat it when we're done. Um, And I love food people. I find food people some of the most delightful friends and colleagues in my entire repertoire. Um, And so today is such a fun day. You're going to enjoy this conversation so much. It's so cute. It's so cute. And it's just so lively. Um, Okay, so let me start like this. First of all, I obviously love to cook, but not everybody does. Um, Some people hate cooking. And I'm here to tell you that is 100% okay. You don't have to like to cook to enjoy good food. You don't have to um, have all the kitchen gadgets um, to do anything meaningful in your kitchen. Um, you've, You've heard me talk a million times about the ways that food can be a connecting point to other people, to our families, even to our history. Um, and again, you don't have to be an amazing cook to enjoy food like that. Um, but maybe you are interested in a go-to recipe or two to have in your back pocket, or maybe you're like, I'm at the starting line. I don't, I'm not, this is not something I ever learned. I didn't grow up with it. I don't really know where to start. I'm intimidated by it. Um, I'm interested in learning a little bit more than what I know. Well, I have an incredible guest today that's going to speak into that, um, that exact spot. I am so excited to have on today, Brie McCoy on the show. Brie labels herself as an accidental home cook. And we'll talk about what that means. Um, Cause she also did not grow up cooking. Didn't she tells a couple of hilarious stories about her early forays into like, even just cooking words that she was like, what does this even mean? Um, hysterical today. <laughs> Maybe laugh so hard. Um, Brie has an incredible food blog called Our Savory Life, and it's jam-packed with easy, healthy recipes. They do not require 17,000 ingredients that you do not have. Um, one of the things that I really love about Brie is that she um, shows this sort of life-giving power of food, not just in the sense that it keeps us alive, but it actually helps us to live. Um, it makes it possible to form connections and break bread and and meet our neighbors as we move into different stages of our lives and helps us reach across the aisle and form beautiful relationships with people both inside and out. And we're going to talk about that as well. Um, Plus our favorite tools, what we absolutely cannot live without, our weird quirks, what's our favorite recipes right now. It's all in here today, you guys. You're going to love Brie and you are going to love this conversation. We laughed and we laughed and we laughed and we laughed. So Delighted to share my conversation with the talented, the very bubbly, the very darling, Brie McCoy. Absolutely delighted, Brie, to welcome you to the For the Love podcast. I'm so happy to meet you. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. I love this podcast. I love you. It's it's so much joy to my day to be well, here. Well, that's perfect. You know what? It's a weird time. If we can have some joy in a day, let's go ahead and have it. Any which way we can get it. Um, So speaking of that, I have filled my listeners in a little bit already about a little bit about who you are. Um, But I'd like to kind of hear you tell us, if you don't mind for a second, um, where are you? Where, Where are you in this year 2021? What's going on? How has it been going for you? What is what has the last year looked like in your world, in your life, with your people? Um, and then let's just tack on this little end question. We, you know, we're all, we're hitting the year mark on quarantine. Isn't it crazy? It what is- do you have like a go-to comfort food for yes. pandemic? Have you had a go-to pandemic? Okay. So you just, yes. you start at the beginning and then you take us to comfort food. Yes. Super, super easy to dive in. You know, how am I doing? Not, I am, I'm not on the, you know, I'm more surviving. I'm in the surviving lane. Yep. Yep. Are, are any of us thriving? I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that either. 
But we have, my husband and I have been in the D.C. area for a little over a year now. And Jen, we moved here a few months before the pandemic, which uh, that would have been nice to know. Like, I wish maybe we would have gotten like a save the date from the pandemic. Like, by the way, this is coming. Maybe don't move somewhere where you don't have family and friends. (laughs) That would have been great. It has been, it's been really lonely. And I know it's lonely for... everyone right now but man it is like wow you move somewhere and we are really Jeremy and I are very passionate about like digging deep to find community and it was like a big roadblock was just put up and it was like we're gonna you're gonna have to figure out life for a minute by yourself without Sephora without yeah right (laughs) without gathering so that has been really challenging there's been some great moments but there yeah it's just been it's been hard and um food is truly getting us by I know what you mean I really do because you know I live in Austin and my entire family is here everybody that is related to me in any which way and so I'm trying to just think about how this year would have been experienced had we just moved away from everybody plus my friend group, which is tight, thick as thieves. um, And then not had the chance to form roots and then just had to figure it out in a city that you're not even from. That is hard. That is lonely. Um, And so if food has been getting you through, what's been a couple of your go-tos? Well, for takeout, I like, I cannot get enough sushi into my mm, life. Mm, <laughs> I, just want, I want all the sushi, all the rice, all the yeah. soy sauce delivered yeah. directly to my mouth. And I then I feel too. like I'm still human. Yep. Yep. Like I'm still here. I'm still alive. I'm uh-huh. still doing the thing. Um, so I would say sushi and Thai food. Like I just. Oh, oh yes. Oh, Thai food know, is my core life value. The, like life is existing because yeah. Thai food. Yes. Yes. The, the day that I learned to put coconut milk in something was the day that I began to really live. Oh, so, it was done. <laughs> yes. Abs- I, I never met a curry I didn't love. I mean, nope. do Pad you thai. make a lot of this? You make a lot of it? Oh, I make some of it, but we have like a hole in the wall Thai place oh. here, a block. It is one block. Oh, That's yeah. not okay. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is so bad. This is so good. Yeah. It's so bad. And you can't beat them. You no. can't beat it. Like Absolutely not. they've got the stuff. They've got the right pans. They've got yes. the right experience. They have the right ingredients. Like sometimes we just need to outsource this to the experts. Oh yes. I'm and like, I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to, sh- they know my name now. Sure. <laughs> this sure. is my community. This time. Yeah. <laughs> like, totally. This it's your new is, best friends. This is my new best friends. You found a way. These are the people I get to see. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite Thai dish to order? Do you have like one that you repeat a lot or are you all over the map? Oh my goodness. I think if a Thai place, the first thing that I always order is uh, pad Thai. And if they can do pad Thai really yeah. well, I'm like, okay. Mm, like, mm, that's a good yes. litmus test. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I spent a, a few months in Thailand. And so mm. I got spoiled. Oh, you did. Yeah, that's so spoiled. Yeah. So now when I've come here, I'm just like, if you can do pad Thai really well, then like it's, we'll shut it down. I own this place now. I will pay you all my money. Totally. Totally. Take it. Take my yes. cash. Yep. Um, so, okay, Brie, you describe yourself as an accidental cook, which is hilarious because I have seen your Instagram. I have seen your blog. You don't look, you don't look like you're accidentally doing anything. And so can you talk about that turn of phrase and how it came to be and what it means in your life? Oh my gosh. Yes. So I, I feel like and this is a badge of honor for me. I have successfully, successfully stayed out of the kitchen for most of my adult life. Like I was like, my contribution here is I will eat your food and I will thank you for it. Sure. There's a place for that. Joyfully. We need those people. Mm. And so I did that most of my life and even into, um, after college and when I was living on my own and working. And then I met my husband, Jeremy, and our whole relationship was long distance. Mm. So when we would meet up with each other, we'd eat out. Yeah. And, um, after we got married, Jeremy realized that eating out for me was a lifestyle, not a vacation. I see. Mm -hmm. It's just the way you fed yourself. Yes. I was like, this is how we eat. Yeah. yeah. This is tier one. Yes. Like I, this isn't even a question. And he was like, well, that's great. Um, we can live in a house Mm. or we can have takeout and like construct a 
house out of the boxes from the takeout. Yes. And I was like, I'm great at construction. No, <laughs> I, I was like, okay, I'm yeah. going to figure out how to cook. You know what? I can do this. Yeah. Hunt thousands of people do this every day. Yeah. So I started to learn to cook and I, it was so bad. I was calling my mom every night and asking her like, not like how to baste a chicken, but like, how do I toast the bread? Like it's yeah. soft. How do I make it hard? How do I make the bread hard? I want to know how to make the bread hard. And I remember specifically, <sighs> um, this was a very uh, difficult conversation okay. between my mother and me, mm. but I was reading a recipe and the recipe said a pinch of salt. And I was like, a pinch of salt. I grabbed my tablespoons and I'm like, there, nothing pinch, here says pinch, a pinch. pinch. No, nothing. I was like, where? I don't know. So I call my mom and I'm like, mom, what is a pinch of oh, salt? Gosh, I am so, <laughs> I'm so tickled. She, she was like, take your thumb and your pointer finger and just like pinch out some salt. As if I had a salt cellar, I did not. Yeah, yeah. And oh, right, I, right. No salt cellar. Right. You've got it in and a little jar. Yeah. Yes. And one of those like a paper, shaker. like the paper yes, jar. Yeah. Totally. With the shaker. And I was like, I scream cried at my mom and was like, mother, now is not the time. I need measurements. I can't. This is so funny. <laughs> Let me just tell you this real quick. I'm going to, I'm going to pile onto this story because yes. <laughs> it makes me laugh so hard. My son, my oldest son, Gavin is 22. And so He's just get out of college and now he's grown or whatever. Like he has a job. He doesn't live here. Um, but I think maybe his senior year in college, he texted me and he was like, mom, uh, people are coming over and I don't have much food. And what is the deal to make rice? I'm like, oh. okay, rice. I'm like, easy, buddy, easy. And this is cheap. It can feed a lot of people. So you just, you know, it's one part rice, two part liquid, voila. And he texts me back and he goes, I've got the rice. I've got the liquid. I do not know what voila is. I'm like, oh, no, buddy. No. Oh, bud. Buddy. Oh, bless oh, him. So I much. mean, he, where's the voila? I've what, never even heard of that. Where, green. What pinch that is? What's a pinch of voila? Okay. <laughs> that's just what I'm asking. Anyway. Oh, goodness, okay. So I, my, this begs a question for me. Is your mom a cook? Did you just, did this just miss you? Did you just yes. skip you? Totally okay. skip. My mom, generations, grandma, great grandma, oh, like generations, generations, um, feeding people all. And I, and my mom never pressed it on me. Like she was like, Brie doesn't want to know how to cook. Brie doesn't want to know how to cook. Great. And then, and then I did start calling her every day. She probably yes. loved it except for the, you know, crying and the screaming. Sure. And the sure. Like. Except for that. Yeah. Um, and then you, so you just sort of accidentally started learning. I started, I started learning and then I started realizing we were having people over to our table because we're a military family. So Jeremy knew a lot of single airmen and people, we were just always having them to our table. And I, I was, I was feeding them dried out burnt chicken with sure. hot sauce though. So, sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I was Covers like, you're a not multitude of sins. A mu yes. a multitude. I was like, listen, you're not getting salmonella. So give me my awards. Sure. Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, it's free. I paid for it. So yes, what do you want here? What do you yeah. want? What do you want? So I noticed just the rich conversation that was happening around the table. People Jeremy had known for years, you know, and these things were coming up at the table. And I was like, wait, wait, what I'm doing in the kitchen is produce like is facilitating what's happening at the table. And then my love took off. But yeah, I, it wasn't even like a love for like, I want to be the most perfect cook or I want to like make the most amazing meals always. It was just like, if anything I do in here can facilitate community out there, I'm in it. I'm all in it. Think about everything you've ever learned about getting healthy. It seems like around every five years, there's something new we're not supposed to eat right? Like, what is it now? What is it? Is it fat now? Is it carbs now? What is it? Plus, every body is unique. That's why Noom uses a different approach altogether, which is psychology. Noom doesn't give you rules. There aren't rules. It teaches you how to think so you can accomplish your personal health goals and actually stick with them long term based on who you are, where you want to go. And listen, I know everybody is busy, but Noom only takes right around 10 minutes a day to use. 10 minutes a day. You've got 10 minutes, I promise. You have heard me talk about Noom a lot and for good reason, because when I'm using Noom, I just feel better. I have more energy. 
Um, I feel a little bit more in control of where I'm wanting to go. I feel more calm because I know I am making the decisions I need to make to take care of myself. Sign up for your trial today at noom.com slash for the love. So that's noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash for the love. You are worth this investment in yourself. Sign up today, guys. Noom.com slash for the love. Here's a mind-blowing stat for you. Back in 1960, 95% of the clothing that Americans bought was made in the U.S. 95%. Today, 3%. So if you're thinking about putting your dollars toward more sustainable products, you have to check out one of my favorite retailers called American Giant. Okay, so American Giant is really cool, you guys. They're a clothing retailer with a 100% American-based supply chain, which means obviously every single piece of clothing was made right here in the U.S. I have an American Giant hoodie, a zip-up hoodie, and an American Giant long sleeve t-shirt and the very second I took them out of the package and put them on, I, I, I'm not trying to exaggerate, the quality is next level. Like you put them on and go, oh, what in the world? The hoodie, it's, it's thick and hefty, super soft inside, fitted. You can already tell this is leveled up. This is a very leveled up sweatshirt. And then their t-shirts have like a real weight to them too. They drape just right. They're just very well constructed. And so for me, there will be staple pieces in my wardrobe for a long, long, long time. Plus it's really never been more important to shop local. You guys, I am so happy that I can help support these people in our own communities right here. So you can get 15% off your first order when you use promo code for the love at American dash giant.com. So it's 15% off. Use the code for the love at American dash giant.com. All right, back to our show. I want to ask you this too, because I did not grow up cooking either. I was an t- absolutely dismal cook. Even when my kids were little, I, we just, I just took things out of a freezer. Everything was brown, put it on a sheet pan, you know, yes. tater tots, chicken nuggets, and French fries, whatever. <laughs> Absolutely no skills at all. Um, so I also taught myself. How did you learn? Like, what, who were your, what was your teacher? I, I bought the biggest cookbook that was in my um, bookstore. It was Cooking Light. I was like, yes, I don't want to cook that much. Not realizing it was like healthy. Cooking. Oh, whoops. You know what? <laughs> we can't understand all the food vernacular. We can't. I was like, like cooking yes. a little, cooking wanna- some. That's how that seemed to you. Yeah. Cooking light. Yeah. And it, I, I loved it. Like I had a lot of successful recipes from it. Calling my mom helped a lot. And then also, um, I got really into, you know, the food network. Sure. All of those things together. And, and here I am. Yeah. That's exactly my story. I always say that I went to culinary school at the food network. That's those were my teachers. Like, especially the old school, like, that was back kind of with a lot more of Rachel Ray and like yes. even Paula Dean with all the sauces and the gravies. And um, yes. I just watched and watched. I'm like, so then you cut like this. Like I learned how to cut yes. vegetables. I didn't know what I was doing either. No. Um, yes. Yes. Where is our PhD from cooking? Like from the Food TV Network. Send yeah. It to us. No, I, I completely agree. And, and even now, like I'm thinking about people listening right now going, this is me. I only do takeout. I don't know how to cook. I never learned yes. the resources at our fingertips now between like YouTube and all the little oh shows you can watch on. It's, it's just literally endless. There's no way to not learn if you want to. Um, so I did hear though, let it be said, we have learned to cook. We're pretty good at it now. We even write cookbooks, what's happening. (laughs) Um, And, but I did, we also fail in the kitchen um, and regularly. Um, So I did hear about your epic fail with the onion casserole. (laughs) Um, And I commend you for trying something that was like, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know. This isn't a normal sounding dish. Um, uh, So you'll have to tell us about that. And then like on the flip side of that, what was, if you can even remember this, what was the first thing that you made that was a little bit more complicated, you know, more than the chicken and the hot sauce. Yes. And you were like, this is delicious. Like I just made that. 
something that might have intimidated you once upon a time, but you had to go with your big cooking light and it was, it came out fantastic. So let's hear fail. Let's hear fantastic. Oh my gosh. Yes. Onion casserole gate. That was a big problem. I like had a pound of onions in a bag and this recipe was like milk, onions, salt and pepper. And I was like, this is a feast for the people. Yeah. That's all like literally nothing else. Yes. Yeah. I was like simple ingredients, yeah. chop some onions. Oh, it was so bad. It was like onion soup, but not like, not like good onions. Not like French onion. Yeah, not, not French like, onions. Uh-huh. It was like some milk with chunks of onion because I also didn't know how to cut an onion at that uh-huh. time. So onion soup was disastrous. And it, it sounds truly, you've done a really good job of painting a bleak picture. It was of bad. The final, you know, the final was, product there. It was really bad. The, it was really bad. We, yeah. my my husband couldn't even like pretend to be like, thank you. He was like, oh, no, buddy. this is so bad. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not going to eat this. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. I, I will eat your dried burnt chicken. Yeah. But I draw the line at onion casserole. Yeah. I just, yeah. I'd rather just be hungry. Yeah. So, like, I'm going to go to bed. Now. I know what you're saying. I've put some things on the table before. And generally the people will power through, even if it's like, meh, they'll be like, you know, it's not my favorite, but I'll put some barbecue sauce on it or whatever. But occasionally it's just like, I can't, I can't do it. What would you say to the, there's plenty of women listening who are like, I, my kitchen is just a holding place for the dishes I registered for when I got married. You know, like it's just kind of a stopping point in the house. I, and, and cooking can be intimidating. Oh, yes. If you didn't grow up learning it. If you feel like also, I should already know this by now, um, oh. when you have to feed other people that live in your house, that has a weird responsibility slash guilt component to it. Yes. So what would you tell those women who were maybe once exactly like you and I, they were, and they're intimidated to be in the kitchen. They're intimidated to to start, they're intimidated to fail. How how would you coach them along? I think about these women all the time because I, they're, they're 26 year old Brie where I'm in the (laughs) kitchen and I'm like, this is, this is, um, very intimidating. A lot of freaking work. I'm sorry. Every night I'm doing this every night meal planning. This food is perishable. Oh, totally. Oh, I, it's, it's very overwhelming. And I think there are a few things that I wish someone would have told 26-year-old Brie as she was in the kitchen uh, making her onion casserole. The first is I wish someone would have told me that failure was going to be my greatest teacher and not my harshest critic. Yep. Like I learned, I have learned so much That's more good. about cooking. Yes. And um, I've learned so much more from my failures than from a cookbook or a TV show or anything like that. It's like my failures they really, they like grounded me and kind of moved me forward. And me okay, too. I understand. Yes. It's like, I understand there is this one failure I have in the kitchen and well, I have so many, but this was early on and it taught me one of my greatest lessons. And it was, I was making butternut squash, like cubed roasted butternut squash. Yeah. And I realized, oh, I only have half the butternut squash this recipe calls for, okay. but I thought that was fine. But I did not think to half the salt. Because uh, I didn't understand that. Whoopsies. Yes. Whoops. So I pull out the butternut squash and it smells so good. And it looks so good. Uh-huh. And I pop one into my mouth and it's like a salt cube. But I was like, no, no, I worked so hard on yeah. this. Oh, yeah. I mean, if like, you sliced and diced that yourself, yes. that's an hour and a half of Oil. labor. Uh-huh. Yes. And I was like, we are, we are launching a full scale uh, rescue mission right now. Mm. This is happening. I put the butternut squash into a colander. And then uh, rinsed it through the, <laughs> rinsed it with water oh, yeah. for a few seconds. Sure. It it was now soggy, salty uh-huh. butternut squash. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I realized in that moment, I was like, hmm, it is hard to take salt away. <laughs> like, and that has been Thinking, like, yeah, that's a lesson. That's a lesson. And that is like one of my biggest lessons that I learned in the kitchen is addition is so much easier than subtraction yes. in the kitchen. Like it's so much easier to add salt. It's yeah. so much easier to add citrus. And so now when I'm cooking and if something seems like that seems like that recipe is calling for a lot of salt or that seems like that's a lot of spice and I don't like that much spice. I add a little less because addition is easier than subtraction. It is. And another, I mean, to kind of 
to, to jump on your point too, with a handful of exceptions, most recipes are flexible. They're to taste. They are to preference. When I first started reading recipes, it was the Bible. It was the constitution. Mm -hmm. If it said one eighth of a teaspoon, well then damn it, that's what it was going in. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not mess. That's what it says. Um, Now I've learned that can go up and down. If you're like, I don't like spicy food, you can leave stuff out. If you're like, I only like spicy food, you could double the quantity. Yes. It's just a way where you start to trust your own instincts and you start to trust your own preferences. Yes. And just know, look, or an ordinary person wrote this recipe. This is how she likes it. This yes. is how this worked one time in her kitchen when she did it in Michigan. You know, it, yes. it might look a little bit her different. Her oven, her pan. Her oven, her pan, her family, yep. like her brand of salt. So yes. there's room yes. for, there's wiggle room. I wish somebody would have told me this, yes. that let's just, li- let's, baking maybe is a little bit more specific and I'm not a good baker and that's probably why. Yeah. Um, oh, I do not like baking. You don't like baking? Do, oh, no, no, me neither. No. Me neither. It's, it's just not. Um, it's precise. It's precise. And you can't really taste as you go. That like, too. Yes. Great point. And then I have this a very weird added layer, which is I'm not a dessert person. Me I just, either. Oh, really? How did I not know that about you? I, I don't love sweets. It's not, if I want dessert, I'm going to have some chips. Yes. You a know? bowl of mashed potatoes. Please. That's what I want. Please. And not so I don't have an inherent reward for the baking process, which is now I get to eat cake because right. I don't really want to. Anyway. Not, okay. I've, yes. I've taken us off the rails. That is, well, and I want to say that I thought that was such an impactful lesson for me too, because I remember, like you were saying that like the recipe was the Bible and I think about, this is how I like to think about recipes. Recipes are like a great guide. They are, for example, like a GPS. I love my maps app. Oh my gosh. I love my maps app. But if I am driving and my GPS is like turn left, I think of Michael Scott in the office and there's a lake left. Uh You should probably, I should probably like. I can trust myself. Yeah, there's a lake right there. Oh my god, <laughs> that's lake. good. That is like, so good. You can you can like divert a little bit and use your senses. I think that was yeah. the other thing is that good. I think really good home cooks they like they use their senses all the time and it's intuitive and it's not something that's necessarily taught. But I realized when I was first learning to cook that my senses were really like in neutral, like my Mm -hmm. sense of hearing kicked in when the fire alarm went off Mm -hmm. or like my sense of smell kicked in when like something was burning. Mm -hmm. And when I learned to bring like, when we can bring all of our senses that we have available to us to the kitchen when we're cooking, like fill your lemon. Is it really soft? It's probably really juicy. You might not need to add all that juice or like smell your uh, jalapeno. Is the smell really spicy? It's probably really spicy. So me, and when I started to be like, I can use the recipe, but I can also use all of my senses. Then it was like, you can't, I can't be stopped. I love that tip. That comes with some practice. Yes. Um, and so people listening, I'm just telling you, if you, if, if that sounds like a foreign language to you, you can develop that. You can, yes. you can kind of develop that response to food. I remember when I started noticing that I knew when something was done, cause I smelled the way it smelled. Yes. I smelled that that's done. It's eight minutes before the timer is going off on my oven, but I know that this is done. Yes. Like that is an exciting and wonderful thing to discover that you can do. Yes. Um, and you, you push on me that can tell you really important things. It's just, I, I love that you're saying that. And we are two examples yes. that should let people know you cannot have that and learn it. Yes. You really, really, really can. And then your instincts like hone and they get better and they get better and they get better. And, and then you're just like, Hey, it's just food. We're not curing yes. cancer. You know, we're just, it's food. just food. This is it's all- just food. And yeah. something that I had to learn is that, you know, there's 365 days in a year and we're cooking hundreds. We're probably end up cooking hundreds of meals. We're just not going to get right every single time. I don't totally. care. I don't care if you're Ina Garten, if you're Martha, Martha Stewart. Yeah. Like it's not going to be perfect every single time. That's right. It can be Nor good Nor is it going to be extraordinary every single time, right? Like right. sometimes it's just food. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes just like, it's just a piece of salmon next to your voila rice. You know what yeah, I mean? Voila, like with I a just, pinch of salt. With a pinch yeah. of salt. I, it's not everything is like, this is fit for a queen. That's okay too. Yes. Um, I like to take a little bit of the, 
the mystery and the gravitas off of the idea of cooking and hosting and serving. I want to go to hosting. I want to talk about that for a second. You mentioned this earlier. Um, Obviously you're a military wife, so you really do understand the move around relocate, start over with community bit alone is that's a lot right there. And so um, I want to talk about this past year specifically, because you've, as you mentioned, your front door into cooking was gathering. It was like, oh, this is a foolproof way to get people around the table and form connections, which you're hundred percent right. I like that. That's what drew you in. Not necessarily the steak. That was a really good reason to care. So now this year, obviously we have not been able to gather like we normally do. Secondarily, as you mentioned, you're brand new to DC area. You didn't even have time to yeah. build a community. So what have you figured out any sort of way um, this year to use food as a connecting point to other people? Like what do you, are you, are you able to access this tool at all right now? And if so, how? That is such a great question. I will say, no, I have not. And I think something that I have realized through this is I have had a lot of shame around that actually, oh, interesting. because it's like, I'm a food blogger. Mm. I wrote a whole book about gathering people around a table. I believe in the power of bringing people to the table. Mm. I am like the first one to knock on you. I don't care if I'm the new neighbor, I'm knocking on your door first. Mm. And to inherently believe and understand the power of bringing people to the table and then to be put in a situation where I am like, I don't have the answer here. I, yeah. I have just like had to unravel some shame around it. And I think mm. that if there's anyone who maybe is listening and has felt a sense of shame of like, I'm not feeding my neighbors well enough, or I, I'm not connecting with people enough, or I'm not, um, you know, showing up enough. I just want to say, and something I had to say to myself is, as far as I'm concerned, I think this is the first time we have lived through a global pandemic. Yep. And not only did we not get to save the date, we did not get a manual. Yeah. And we are just like, I mean, I'm, I may only be able to give 50% of myself right now, but it is like everything I can give right now. Yeah. And so I have tried to show up in like, you know, the Zoom calls, you know, the sure. Zoom cocktail things. And yeah. I have found on Instagram so many people that are tired of cooking. Like I can't yeah. cook another meal yeah. and being like, you know what? I can show up. I'm going to share some funny stories. Yeah. I'm going to show some favorite tools because we, you know, we got, we got to keep eating. Yeah, we, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but it has been, it has been really difficult. And I think, I think what I had to come to as well is I was like, what is at the heart of me bringing people to my table? Like what is at the heart of that? And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, to love my neighbor well. Totally. And I just re realized like I am loving my neighbor well right now by Good. like wearing a mask or like by social distancing or, you know, by being safe with the people in my bubble. And so it looks different to love my neighbor right now. Mm, it does. And I appreciate that. I, what we need right now is a real heavy dose of letting ourselves off the hook Yes. in the ways that we used to connect in the ways that we used to show up in the ways that we used to gather. It'll come back. It's on yes. its way. It's on its way. But, um, I do love that you have found a fun and meaningful way to connect with people virtually. That's yes. that, that counts. Yes. That, can, that matters. And especially this year when it's really all we have. Oh my gosh. Um, and yeah. so, I mean, I commend you for deciding to use your space in a way that makes people feel entertained and delighted, but ultimately also connected and seen. I have another question for you. Um, and I really love this. You apparently are a woman who travels with knives. And I find this hilarious and also fascinating. Um, so I want to know about this. And I also want to know what's in your knife bag because maybe, I, I don't even know, seven or eight years ago, my mom gave me a nice knife for Christmas. I still remember where I was sitting when I opened it. And I was like, <gasps> my whole family was like, 
this, this is what you're so excited about. I'm like, I cannot remember a better present. No. Like a fancy, expensive knife that's just like razor sharp. So I want to hear about, I want, I want to hear your knife talk here. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wow. We have entered into a sacred space. This is great. Okay. I'm ready. This is Okay. When I was first learning to cook, I went into my local kitchen store and I was like, what is something you think is essential that I have as a new cook? Oh, and yeah. they were like a uh, sharp, high quality knife. Yep. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm like in kindergarten yeah. level here. You're like, I like, mean like a colander, yes. you know? Yeah. Like I'm trying to stay alive uh-huh. in the kitchen. And they were like, no, no, a doll knife is actually so much more dangerous because right. the blade isn't sharp. So it can slip off the food while you're chopping it. And then it will cut your finger. It's very bad. And so they convinced me, you know, a sharp knife is so safe. Actually, sharp mm-hmm. knives are safe. And so I walked out of the store with that knife. I call it my child. I call my knives, my children. Yeah. I'm like, I, the first time I chopped an onion with it, I, I was know. like, it, is this what, this is what this is supposed Unbelievable to be? Unbelievable the difference. Like I had been sawing yeah. at yeah. my vegetables. Like powering it, just pushing it through the food. Yes. yes. Like I was like a lumberjack up in uh-huh. there. Like I was just like, this is so, just so much effort and the sweat, like the actual sweat. Yeah. And so I was like, oh my gosh, they're right. Like nothing beats a high quality sharp totally. knife. So I, I became obsessed with it. And a great thing about, um, your knife, your high quality knives is that for anyone listening, I, I get this question all the time and they're like, oh, I got this great knife 20 years ago or whenever it was, uh-huh. you can get your knife sharpened at any kitchen store. Sure it's can. magical. Yes. You, I, you It'll know bring this. that thing right back to life. It will bring it right back to life. Yep. You can do it as you, I think they recommend like twice a year or sometimes yep. quarterly. And I call it taking the kids to camp. I yep. like package them up, drop them off. And you can know if your knife is not sharp enough, if you just like run it through a piece of paper mm. and if it slices through a piece of paper, like butter, you're good. Your knife doesn't need to be sharpened. But if you run it through a piece of paper and it's kind of jagged and it uh. can't really get, then you just know time to go to camp. Time That's to good. Do- um, but yes, that, so that, that's, that became my obsession with knives. And then as I'm sure, you know, Jen, when I started going on vacations or traveling with friends and friends find out you love to cook, then they oh. want you to cook. Oh, I know. That's my, that's my role in yes. my friend group. Yes. It's like you will uh-huh. cook the meals, which I love doing, but whenever we would go somewhere, uh, like an Airbnb or someone's house, I would pull out the knife and it was so dull. Oh, and yeah. I was just like, you know what? No more. Uh-huh. I, no. I have a solution. Yes, I have. I got on the Amazon. I was like knife bag. And um, now I travel. I travel with my Santoku knife, which is like a chef's knife, but it's yeah. a little lighter. And I like that for my little hands. Um, a paring knife mm-hmm. and a wine opener. Oh, sure. You cannot leave that one up to chance. You got you need because you would not believe how many Airbnbs don't have a wine opener. I mean, who are these people? What, what are you doing? That is so amazing. So you have to obviously always check that. You've got to yes. check your luggage. So that's a, a sacrifice you're willing to make. Willing to check the luggage. What's really great is a few years ago, <coughs> I was traveling with Laura Tremaine. Mm-hmm. And um, it was the first time we were meeting up. We knew each other, but it was the first time we were meeting up in yeah. person. And we we're going to travel to her cabin with a few other women. And so we meet and she's like, oh, great. You're not like a crazy person. Sure. And I was like, absolutely not. And then we get to her cabin and we had gotten there a night before everyone else. And I'm unpacking and she's like, your luggage is as big as a body bag. And I'm like, yes. And then I pull out the knives and she's like, you travel with knives. <laughs> she was like, I'm going to lock my bedroom door tonight. Like, this is new information. This is a new experience yes. having. Yes. I was like, so from now on, I tell my friends I will be arriving with knives. Yes. And you know what? When they get to eat the dinner you, prefer- you prepared, they're, they're not fussing. They don't care. No one, no one cares anymore. No one cares. You like razor sharp their dinner. Yes. I really appreciate your commitment to that. Um, it is, you're so right that once you use a beautifully sharpened, wonderful knife, you literally cannot use a stupid knife anymore. You can't. You it's, can. It's like, I'll just mush my food like a caveman, yeah. I guess. Like, I will use my teeth uh-huh. before yeah. I use this. Yes, you absolutely. Know. There are many paths to finding your family story. Whether you trace your family generations back with a family tree or you uncover your ethnicity with ancestry DNA, 
it's super easy to get started. An ancestry DNA test tells you where your ancestors are from. And ancestry's billions, like with a B, billions of records and millions of family trees let you discover their personal stories. You could find a famous relative, who knows? Or perhaps a photo of your great grandma as a little girl. Whatever you find, it's sure to change the whole way you look at your family history, which let's be honest, is the story of you and worth knowing. It's truly amazing what you can learn about yourself and ancestry. I can trace my family's path from the UK to the US, step by step. And it's pretty crazy to see your family story laid out clearly right in front of you. Most of my family members aren't around to tell their stories anymore and yours aren't either, but ancestry is helping to keep them alive. Start exploring your family story today. Head to my URL at ancestry.com slash for the love to get your ancestry DNA kit and start your free trial, free, 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 yay. That's ancestry.com slash for the love. All right, back to our show. So I want to, I want to stick on this idea for a second because you kind of mentioned going into a supply store, like what must I have? I really actually like that question. I'm in other, some other categories. I'm le- I'm having to be a learner right now. I'm having to learn a whole bunch of stuff and I'm like, people know things. You could just ask questions and they are happy to help you because this is what they do. This is the thing they know about. Um, And so first of all, I love that you just went in and said, if I was going to get something important, what would it be? Uh, Gosh, they must've been so excited to be like, let's talk about knives. Um, But you're also a wizard when it comes to picking out kitchen gadgets that home cooks will actually use, which I appreciate because there's a bunch of stupid ones out there. Oh my like gosh, they're so dumb, dumb, ones. dumb. Please just you might as well just saute your money and eat it with yes. a fork. Yes. Um, so what, just rattle off a few of us. What are tools that will actually use that actually come in handy? And I bet I have this, I bet I agree with you. I have some that I love too, oh, but I'm like, oh. I bought this on a whim and it's my freaking favorite thing. And I Changed use it all the life. time. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited about this okay, conversation. Do this. Okay. So the first one is a garlic roller. Do you have a garlic mm, roller? No, not a, not a press. No, it is like a silicone tube and you put a clove of garlic in it and you give it a few firm rolls and out comes naked garlic. It is the most naked garlic you have ever seen in your whole life. I like scream naked garlic when it pops out and it is just like, I use so much garlic and a lot of times like, you know, you can smash it, the peel. Yeah, but it's like so a, sticky. It's, it's sticky. so sticky and you've got to, sometimes it doesn't come off. Yes. This, this garlic roller, like it is naked. It is so naked. There's no peel. It just pops out oh. beautifully. It is like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to Amazon this the very second we get off of this call. It is, it will change your, it will change your life. It is my favorite. I also travel with that in my back. Cause I'm like, this is the only way I peel garlic now. So huh. that's the only way. So there's the garlic roller. And then I have a meat crumbler, which I call like my kitchen's magic wand and mm. it crumbles meat. It's just like, you have never seen meat so beautifully crumbled in your uh-huh. whole life. Like when you're browning it. Yes. When uh-huh. you're browning. Yep. Chicken, beef, sausage. Uh-huh. But then I found later, and this is one of those tools where I would see people use it. And I was like, that's dumb. Use your wooden spoon. Like, oh, uh-huh. why do you need a meat uh-huh. crumbler? But then I got it and I was like, oh my oh, gosh, my meat is. Your, uh, it's per- perfectly uniform, it's, little yes. pellets. Or yes. Whatever not like a big chunk over here. Yeah. And then, and it just does it so fast. And then I found out that it can also like mash uh, avocados for guacamole. Mm. It can mash potatoes for ma- Like I was like, oh, this thing does so many things. Okay. So I love that. Okay. Um, I use always when I'm cooking a bench scraper, which is something I think a lot of people huh. use for baking. I don't bake, um, huh. but I have tiny hands as I have mentioned already. Huh. <laughs> yes. And um, when I need to like scoop a bunch of veggies sure. into a pot or a pan, yeah. or even when I want to clean off my cutting board, just like one fail swoop, yeah. boom. Bench I scraper. use that almost every meal. Every meal? Almost every meal. Like, it's how do incredible. we even, how are people moving vegetables right? without? My this cutting one. board is behind my stove, my yes. stove top. So I have to, I cut over here and then I have to go across the aisle and put the thing in a pan. I yes. use that scooper. I don't know what it's called. I use my <laughs> scooper uh, every time, all the every time. Every time. Yeah. Like I, I literally cannot cook without I'm like yeah. get the bench scraper and then um I also really love these they're like ounce 
measuring cups. They're tiny. Huh? They measure, um, I think four tablespoons or two ounces mm. and they're perfect for, uh, first I got them cause they're perfect for cocktails because uh-huh. cocktails are measured in ounces. But then I was like, you know, a recipe is like three tablespoons, olive oil. And I was like, well, I can just pour it instead of like three uh, tablespoons. Uh-huh, uh-huh, with, uh-huh. I just, so I love, I have four of those now. They're mini nice. little. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last thing that I really love is a trash bowl, which Rachel Ray is famous uh-huh. for the trash she bowl. Sure is. You can use any bowl. I yep. do have a signature Rachel Ray trash bowl. Why wouldn't you? Why would Marketing this- works on us too, people. Okay. Oh, it works on us. I, yeah. I remember a few years ago, I saw, I could, yes, no, I don't want a regular bowl. I want the yeah. Rachel Ray trash bowl. <laughs> God. <laughs> just having a bowl on your counter to put yeah. trash in so you're not like walking back and forth to your yeah. trash can. It sounds it sounds crazy, but I love it. It's so simple. Well, it does make our motion in the kitchen more economical. Like yes. you don't necessarily know how much time and energy you lose doing constant little trips like that. Right. So yes, when you kind of can sort of pare it down to less movement and motion. It really does speed up your time in the kitchen overall. Um, Less wasted trips across. I also want to add to the um, list of kitchen gadgets that I love and I'm happy that I bought. Obviously a mandolin. I use my mandolin a lot. And that was one of the things I was like, just cut it. Just cut it with a knife. This is laziness. It is not laziness. Not. So fast. You cannot get the, oh. I can't get them that thin. Obsessed. Um, probably five or years ago, my mother-in-law for like a little throw away, put it in the stocking. You know, it was just like a little, it was this big, put it in the stocking filler. It was the silicone clamp and you can clamp it on the edge of your soup pot. And then it has these two hooks and you put your wooden, your spoon in it. So the spoon is just resting on the edge of your pot. And, but over the, <laughs> Over the actual pot, so it's the, it doesn't drip on your. I'm I'm doing a really bad job of selling this. I am like I so here for. This. <laughs> love it so much, so it doesn't make a big spoony sloppy mess when I put my spoon over on my counter. Oh my gosh! And I broke it because I used it so much, and I scoured <laughs> the world to find a replacement. And I texted her. I was like, "Look, you've probably given me things that were worth four hundred times as much as what you spent on this, but this is my favorite present you ever gave me." Um, I am going to go. I have seen those and I have wondered about them. You have sold me. You have sold me. I need one. Worth it. It just keeps your pot and your spoon in a one spot. (gasps) And it keeps it up elevated enough that your spoon doesn't get too hot. Anyway, I need to stop talking about it. It's just one of those dumb things that I was like, I cannot believe how often I use this thing. Yeah. Like I cannot cook now unless I have this thing. What am I going to do? Put my spoon on my countertop? Unbelievable. That's That's not acceptable. It's just Ridiculous. That's completely not acceptable. Um, okay. Here's the, here's one thing I'll, <clears throat> else I want to talk to you about before we start wrapping it up. This is one of my absolute core values. One of my signature moves as well. Um, and this is something that you essentially have a, P- a PhD in, which is Friday night, pizza night, pizza night period. It doesn't have to be Friday. I can have pizza night seven nights a week Every and night. never, ever tire of it. Absolutely never. Every night. Um, so I want to hear about your, I want to hear about your pizza approach. I want to hear about your dough. I want to hear about your tricks. I want to hear about your favorite toppings. I want to hear about your sauce. I just, I, I really want to talk about pizza. This is really, really important to the way that I want to live my life. This is on, this is in my journey. This is pizza. Oh my gosh. Pizza is also life. Just like Thai food is life. Is. Pizza. Oh, I love it so much. And we have been doing pizza night for several years. One of the reasons that I love pizza night is because generally I'll make the dough, but Jeremy makes the pizza and it's just like, I get the night off a little, like, I'm just like, yeah, I've been cooking a lot. Like, yeah. how about you take care of the pizza situation? Yes. But we have, um, dough long- is fast. Oh yes. Fun fact. Seems so fancy. Fast. I'll make the homemade dough. That's a 10 minute process. It is 10 minutes. Uh-huh. It is a few ingredients. It is. And then it's like, but it looks, you, it rises and you're like, I did that. I'm special. Like, I did that. Yes. <laughs> I've that done took- the hard work of the dough. You need to take the rest of the pizza. <laughs> I'm tapping out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like yeah. this took me out. Yeah. So we, for a long time, we did a grain-free pizza dough, which I have on my site and it's like a thin crust. It's really mm-hmm. yummy. Um, but then pandemic times hit and I was like, let's start a new dough. I also started naming my dough. So that is also a feature of pandemic times is just naming yeah. everything. Sure. 
my knives, my dough. Yes. Everyone has a name now. And so I make um, the King Arthur's flour, like standard pizza recipe. They have like 11 D pizza recipes on their site. I just make their standard one. Nice. And it's so easy. It's so easy. It's like flour, oil, water, yeast. Yeah. Yeah. We're that's it. Here. You guys, Do, don't you remember when you learned that you can make pizza dough and you were like, Oh, oh that gosh. seemed so beyond my capacity once upon a time. And I use re Drummond's. It's essentially the same. Thing. Oh, yeah. It's, it's all the same. That's the same ingredients. But I was like, wait, yeah. Oh, like just oh dump my. this in your mixer and that's that's the end. This is I have it. No idea what a piece of cake that was, and people still find it fancy. Oh, like absolutely. you know, like, you, you made this dough, you made homemade pizza. It it is the thing that it can um it it qualifies or reveals itself to be fancy, and you're like, no, I know it's, it's a tr- it's it's that is a real lie. It it's is a real lie, but I'm gonna then, ride it. Oh. Uh, yes. I'm, oh, I'm making my own homemade pizza yeah, tonight. Yeah, you I know. <laughs> like, just want to let you know. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So you're but the dough did, maker did... and Jeremy's yes. the sauce guy, the toppings guy, the baking yep. guy. Yeah. He like presses the, we like to make our dough in a cast iron skillet right now. Mm. We have a pizza stone, but now we're like really loving that cast iron skillet because it gets nice. the bottom nice and crispy. We put like a little bit of fleur de sel on the mm-hmm. crust before it bakes because, mm, because a little mm. bit of finishing dough. Mm-hmm. Like that's exactly what happens when you take a bite. You just love it so much. So, um, so yeah, he, and I usually do a double batch so yep. that I can freeze. Me too. I put it, I throw the other half in the freezer. Then the next Friday, I just, well, the Thursday night before I pull it out, let it thaw. We're having pizza again. This is how to live. It's, this is how yeah. to live. It's so easy. And you always have the ingredient. Like we always have pizza sauce on hand. We always have cheese, yeah. pepperoni, like right. these things aren't super perishable where it's like, I need to restock them all uh-huh, the time. Totally. Yes. So it's so easy. And he like, he, he has perfected this method where he like pokes the dough, like right before oh. he puts it in. So it doesn't bubble up. And he puts a, like a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the cast iron. So it is extra crispy. crust. Mm, 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 and then mm, we just do, I, I, I'm so basic. I'm basic. I'm basic. I love pepperoni and cheese. There is no shame in that game. If (laughs) pepperoni and cheese is wrong, I literally don't ever want to be right. And I'm not kidding. I can't. Like, I just want pepperoni and cheese pizza. (laughs) Yes, I do too. And the nice thing about pizza though is also whatever you have can go on it. So pizza is the most flexible thing in the entire world. I'm always like, what needs to go? What green peppers on its last leg? Like if you're an adventurous eater, if you like What's something weird? I could, you, anything can go on a pizza. It's anything. a vehicle for food. It is a vehicle. My favorite thing, to, if we have leftover chicken, um, like leftover shredded chicken, barbecue chicken pizza. It's Done. so easy. Like, don't even have to think about it. It's magical. This is making me feel excited. I, this is making me want to do this tonight. I know. It's like, it's Friday, yeah. right? No. Yeah. I lo- we love homemade pizza here. And we grill it a lot, especially in the summer. That's oh. fun. Um, um, we do that for a lot of parties because yes. people feel real fancy and precious. If oh, you yes. give them their own little individual bit of dough and they take it out to the grill and we tint oh. it. And I mean, they're just like, well, this is really special. I'm like, it's not, but, <laughs> but <gasps> it feels special. Yeah. It's well, I will be there the yeah. day after the pandemic ends. I know. I know. <laughs> you just will, set up a little, like, I- a pizza station. Here's your yes. topping options. You can do it your own way, however you want to do it. Because my that. pizza philosophy is almost always more is more. Yes. I'm like, I can't hold mine. It's fall. No. It's, I've, <laughs> I've got to like push it to the edge of my plate and just like eat it off the edge of the plate. It's, I never <laughs> can learn restraint. Um, oh my gosh. That is amazing. Yeah. So fun. <laughs> um, I love, love, love this. Okay. Three. We're going to wrap this up. These are some like rapid fire questions. <laughs> I'm asking Everybody in the food series, which is such a fun lineup of incredible food people, um, you obviously included. And so here's the first one. This is a hard question. This is admittedly a hard question. If you (coughs) could only eat one dish for the rest of your life, what would it be? And a side question to that, who makes it the best? Oh my goodness. I know, it's mean. It's so so mean. mean. It's so mean. I'm going to have to end the podcast. No. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> to wrap it up. Right yep. now. Oh my goodness. So the first thing that came into my mind is my, and it has to come from my mom, my mom's pot roast. 
Oh, and I don't know nice. what wizardry. Mm-hmm. I don't know what magic is happening. I have made it with her. I have cooked it using her tried and true recipe. Uh-huh. It never tastes like hers. It never tastes like hers. It's so upsetting. Uh-huh. It is so good. It is so and the potatoes yeah. and the gravy totally. and the. It is like comfort. It is the most comforting thing to me. Whenever I visit, she just knows. Like it doesn't matter if I'm showing up at nine a.m. Mm. She's like the pot roast is ready for you. <laughs> There's <laughs> something about the mom's pot roast. This is not what you are saying right now is a common lament, which is that none of us can get our pot roasts exactly like our moms and grandmas did it. And I'm not sure why we know the deal. Sear it. We know, we know what to do. We know the tricks that they used. I just don't know if it's that our memory is too nostalgic Mm. and thus we're, we just can't ever, ever, ever do it right because it's not our childhood pot hook roast but anyway mm. you never thought about that I was like my mom is withholding ingredients uh-huh. yeah my yes. mom is like uh-huh. she's trying to keep me tethered to her as yeah. much as possible <gasps> the memory that's such a good point yeah I think we've overlaid our pot roast memories with childhood and so it's so special like for me pot roast was every single Sunday every single yeah. we'd come in from church the whole house smelled like pot roast it was the most, it was perfect. Always mashed potatoes, of course, always with gravy, of course. Um, yeah, I can't duplicate it either. And I've made a million of them. Yeah. Anyway, here, here on that. It's yeah. It's okay. So here's, how about this one? And not, so not, not with takeout. So it has, has to be in your own kitchen, but when you're just too tired for a whole operation for a, for a big deal, but you're not going to order in, what is your go-to thing? chicken wings oh that to me is an ordeal oh my gosh you make There's... homemade chicken wings when you don't oh. want to cook yes this is so easy it's I just like I throw them in a little bit of uh baking powder I throw them in the oven I mean the cook time is a little bit because it's uh-huh. like an hour yeah but then they come out I just put I put in a little saucepan honey and frank's red hot uh-huh. sauce yeah, yeah, yeah. and then just a clove of toss. garlic of course yeah I toss them and I eat the whole bowl yeah why are they I'm so good? Like, they're so good. It's so it's a ranch. Like, I'm just like, I can't be bothered. You go sit in the oven for an hour. I'll I back. really appreciate the complexity of your, I'm too tired to cook. Therefore I'll make homemade chicken wings with homemade sauce. Like my answer to that question is a sandwich. And I, I make it delightedly because sandwich is also my favorite food. So I love sandwiches. I, Wait, sandwich is a better idea. Like sandwich is my favorite food. I eat one every single day of my life. And so sandwiches are delicious. They are. And I'm not, and I make it like I make it right. But I'm just saying that homemade chicken wings, I'm like, everybody get excited. I made you homemade chicken wings tonight. This is a real dinner. So you win in that category for sure. Okay. Oh no. Oh, that's Last great. question. <laughs> everybody gets this question in every series all the time. And you can answer it literally however you want. So Big, small, important, not important. Completely up to you. It's Barbara Brown Taylor's question. What is saving your life right now? I love this question. I love the answers your guests give to this question. And so I have thought about this. And I was thinking back over the past year, and I was like, this year was so sad. This year was so sad. Mm. And it was so hard. And there were so many things that I love that I couldn't have, you know, like visiting my parents, going into Sephora, you know, meeting with people. And I was like, what is saving my life? And I realized Mm. like truly, truly food is saving my life. It's the thing I look forward to every day. Like I look forward to food every day. It's the thing that like comforts me. It's the thing that makes something that is kind of small feel like a celebration. It's the thing that like, you know, with the popcorn on the TV and I feel lonely and I just want my popcorn. (laughs) Food is true. Like I realized like food is really saving my life. That's a great answer. And it really is real. It is something still very tactile and ever present that we get to enjoy in yes. a year when we don't get to enjoy hardly anything we used to. Exactly. So I love that answer. I think that's fantastic. Okay. Bree, can you tell my listeners where they can find you, um, where your stuff is? And also like, what are you working on right now? If anything, because a perfectly good pandemic answer is nothing. I know, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I am working on waking up every day. Yeah, yes, yes. 
Um, I am most active on Instagram at Brie McCoy. I love sharing all of the crazy kitchen tips and hacks. And I just love like connecting with that community. People who are like overcooking, people who love cooking. I'm like anything involved with cooking. I like just want to be there with you. So that's where I'm most often present. And then I um, just released my first course, which is an everyday kitchen masterclass. And it was five weeks of me sharing with people like everything that I wish I knew yeah. when I first started learning to cook the foundation of like, if you have this foundation, when you are cooking your meal, you are going to be so confident and so like at home in your kitchen. Love and it. so we are looking at releasing that again later in the year. And it's, I think it's my favorite thing. Cause I get to like actually be with people in their kitchen yeah. as much as I possibly can, you know, virtually. Um, but I just love it so much. Fantastic. When will we, when do you think we'll be able to have that? probably spring late spring of this Perfect. year we'll Yay. open it again how fantastic have you already <laughs> filmed it is it like locked and loaded yes it's all filmed there's like 30 video lessons there's a knife course that is 30 minutes long well you know what you love what you love you know <laughs> like I was like we got it we got to get into the knife <laughs> don't make apologies <laughs> don't like Let's talk about knives. We talk about garlic a lot, but yes, it's all filmed. All of the PDFs are ready to go. Everything's what good a fun to go. project! Fantastic! Yes. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Thank you for coming Thank on you. today. What a fun time to get to talk to you this morning. Thank you so much for just being who you are and bringing what you do to bear on your community in this world right now. And I am long on record as saying food actually matters. Food brings us together. Food is powerful. Mm -hmm. It is wonderful. It's one of the greatest things about being alive. Yes. Um, and it so is. I love to find other people who love it as much as I do. Um, and then help other people learn to love it too. And you're yes. killing it. You're killing the game, girl. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for having me on. This is so fun. This was so fun. So I love fun. talking with food about you. I know. Okay. Until next time. <gasps> Bye. Okay, guys. I hope you loved it. Over at jenhatmaker.com under the podcast tab. We'll have all the show notes from this, including all the links that Brie and I talked about to products, to all of her social media sites, her, her website, her book, all things Brie McCoy. It'll be a one-stop shop for you um, for literally anything we talked about. And so thanks for joining me. You guys, the food series is so fun. It's, and we needed some fun. Um, we needed, this is what I wanted to talk about right now. This is, this is it. It's been a heavy year. It's been a long time. So this, we have so many great guests in this series. You're going to be so tickled. You are going to be so tickled at who we're talking to in the food series. So come back for more. Whether you love to cook or don't, whether you're good at cooking or not, it doesn't matter. There is something for everybody in this entire series. It is an absolute blast. Um, okay, guys. So on behalf of Laura and her team and Amanda and I, thank you for listening and downloading and reviewing and rating and sharing our podcast all the time. A hundred percent subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll just pop right into your earbuds every single week without even trying. All right, you guys have a great one. See you next week. Bye.